Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Photo Brigade podcast. I'm Robert Kaplan, and I have my guest today, Monica Stevenson. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Thank you so much for, for coming, and um, we'll get into you in one second. Beforehand, I just want to say... Um, give a shout out to Adorama. Thank you so much for letting us use your event space here. As always, check them out, adorama.com slash events. Um, thank you to uh, Canon Professional Services and Temba Bags for your uh, support over all these years. Um, and then also, if you could, please click subscribe to the YouTube page, our YouTube page. Um, it's just Photo Brigade on YouTube, and you'll see all this great content, podcast events, and we have some really cool new content coming your way. So please hit the subscribe button. So back to you, Monica. How are we doing today? I'm doing great. Happy President's Day. Same to you. I had trouble getting here, and uh, so we're, we're a little bit late. Sorry sorry for the folks online who are, who are trying to tune in here. Hope they hung in with us. Yeah, I forgot it's President's Day. It's my, also my birthday coming up, so I should know this. My wife was telling me, don't you know it's a national holiday around your birthday every year? And every year I forget. <laughs> I don't know. It's not. It's one of those things. So um, Monica is a commercial director of photography and photographer, um, and you do a lot of work that's very different than what it is that I do. Um, I, I, yeah. It couldn't, I don't think it could be more different than what you do. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that uh, I've never really gotten into myself is the... Oh, someone's calling. Is that you? I don't think it's me. I turned mine off. It is you. It is me? Oh, that's terrible. Chewy, would you turn it off, please? Yes. All right. It's okay. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't... Yeah. Maybe it's something important. Uh, never. Okay. Just You can just turn the sound off, please. Thank you. All right. We will cut through this. Sorry, internet people. This is the way things go. We're on... Uh, so anyway... Hey. So we, we differ in, in many ways. One of the things that I've always thought would be one of the hardest types of photography, especially is product photography, which is something you specialize in, mm -hmm. um, which, which is a lot of intense lighting, a lot of detail, macro work. Mm -hmm. um, and did, did, was this something that you specialized in when you were getting into photography, or is this something that you grew into and started somewhere else? I'm, I'm wondering your background and how you got yeah. into what, what you do today. It's, I think it's a personality that, it's my personality that made me gravitate towards it. Uh -huh. um, I mean, I'm, I'm meticulous in the way I see. I'm not a meticulous person. Um, if you saw my kitchen in my bedroom, it, um, you would see that I'm not a typical still life photographer in my bedroom. But um, it's a personality thing. I like to place, I like to make pictures as opposed to taking pictures. Uh -huh. um, I like very, very much to control every aspect of the photographs. You know, the lighting, the props, the way thing, the way things stand up. You know, how to hold things together. Uh -huh. um, the Photoshop afterwards is often very crafted. Right. Um, so my work, even when I take pictures of things that move fast, mm -hmm. they're studied pictures. You know, they're, they're, I, I put a lot of effort into making the picture. So right now we're going through your jewelry. This is, this is a jewelry folder, I believe, that I yeah. opened up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and are all of these done for, for these jewelry clients or are these kind of projects on your own? Are you, like, what, what, so, like, what were these shot for? Or were they shot for a portfolio or were they shot for a client? Um, they're probably, they're a combination of both. Um, these particular ones that you're going through, were for a jewelry, that's for a jewelry store up in Rochester, New York. Uh -huh. um, that job actually is a testament to cold calling. You know how people say that cold calling really? doesn't work? Oh, yeah. That so, was, so that's another thing we got to talk yeah. about. You've been a freelancer uh, for forever? a long time, oh, forever. Okay. And uh, as have I. Um, and so you, 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 cold, you tell us about this job. You cold called, and how did this job come about? Um, I got a list from somewhere of jewelry stores, high end luxury jewelry stores in New York, uh, in the U.S. Uh huh. And I just went through it geographically, and I picked this jewelry store up in uh, Rochester, New York, called Mans. And I'm rather bold on the telephone, so I called them up and I chatted them up, and uh, they said, "Well, you know, we don't need a photographer now because we have one, but stay in touch." And mm -hmm. that usually means that's a nice way to say goodbye. Yeah, sure. But I stayed in touch, and sure enough, um, a year later, they hired me, and I worked for them for four years in a row. So. Um, I mean, that that's it was a perfect testament to cold calling works. I don't care what yeah. anybody says it works. Yeah. And you also um, you work here in the city and also in was it North Carolina, North Carolina, North yeah. Carolina. How, what, what's your split on time between the two? I'm probably down in North Carolina about two and a half to three weeks of the month. And then yeah. the rest of the time up here. What do you prefer? 
Uh, I honestly. prefer North Carolina, honestly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm a country girl at heart, and the western, m- the mountains of North Carolina are absolutely magnificent. And it's, you know, talk about taking pictures. It's ma- it's so beautiful down there. Oh, man. Well, we're going to get into, also, you, you do a lot of, uh, you're big into horse photography as I well. Am, yeah. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Um but uh, so let's let's talk about how you and I met, which is actually we're actually meeting for the first time right now. <laughs> uh, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. But, Robert. but we've known each other through the internet, uh, Facebook, and through mutual friends and Ri- the telephone and the telephone. Uh, Richard Patterson, I think, connected us originally. He did. Yeah. He, he did this uh, really nice video for you, which we'll probably put on in the background as we're talking later. That'd be great. Um, but uh, he's he's really great, and uh, we also work with mutual techs like Mike Mike Eisler who's Good old just, Mike Eisler. just one of the best and he's sent a lot of behind the scene uh, photos which we'll also go through shortly um, but uh, what's how important to you I mean when you're shooting like for instance let's just look at this this photo of a heart diamond on some sort of fur right okay. it's not easy to shoot that no like people think oh yeah it's just you know you're shooting a diamond you're shooting straight on down at a diamond what kind what goes into a shot like this, like in terms of lighting, what like when you're approaching something like this, what are you thinking? Well, the things that you, thing that you have to realize with diamonds is that they are comprised, obviously, of thousands of facets. And uh-huh. in the same sense that a building, I mean, especially a Frank Gehry building, for instance, has tons of sides, and you know, an architectural photographer Engine will think yeah. about illuminating each side of the building. Well, I look at a diamond as a miniature building, and um, I. I really do concentrate on applying the light and the shadows into each individual facet. Mm-hmm. Um, so I see kind of in a micro way, a lot of little silver cards. Um, it's more like subtractive lighting as opposed to additive lighting. You know, you put general light there and then you take it away with black cards. Um, but yeah, you just kind of put your Zen hat on and uh, breathe deeply and, and make sure you have a lot of time. <laughs> how many lights do you use for, well, this is a, a bunch of stuff right here, but yeah. how many lights do you typically use for your, for an, an average, An average guess, jewelry shot? Jewelry shot. Maybe five. Whoa. Yeah, well, because you have to light the background too sometimes. Oh, you know. right, oh right, right, right. Um, but the four end, it's all about power too, because if you want depth of field, you need power. So, um, you know, one or two lights behind me, but... They're, they're you know with a scrim, so it's make it, it's one light, but I've got power of two lights behind. Right, me. right. Okay, gotcha. And I've heard, and I don't know if it's uh, that's a ninety thousand dollar watch, by the way. Oh my gosh. I've I've made friends with a lot of security guards in my life. I bet <laughs> people that come in with like a briefcase of with their. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, one of the security guards, his briefcase was electrified. Oh my! God. So when he would walk down Fifth Avenue with you know millions of dollars of jewelry in it, if someone stole it, he would press a little remote in his pocket and it would um, just, it, oh, it, it just would like, zap everybody. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's hilarious! That's hilarious. I've also heard that uh, when you're shooting. Uh, and I, I say this because I am completely naive when it comes to this type of photography. Huh. Really, I am. Um, the, pe- the photographers also sometimes use mirrors yeah. to reflect light. When yeah. they, maybe it's when they don't have enough lighting or whatever, they want to bounce things. Is that something you do? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what a mirror does is it takes a big light and turns it into a teeny specular light. Oh, okay. So you can regulate the shape, you know, by cutting your mirror into a particular shape or size. Uh-huh. All of a sudden you have a very, 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 very small light, but it's a strong light because it's reflecting the power from the big light. Right, right. Did you, maybe, did you already tell me this? Did you study? This? I did. In fact, you and I went to the same college. Oh, that's right. Oh, you. Oh, you. Viscom, baby. <laughs> What was it? Pan- no, not Panthers. Cougars. Bob- Bobcats. Bobcats. I knew, oh I knew it was some kind of cat. That's awful. We'll have to edit through that part. Goodness gracious. Terry Don't Eilers tell Terry so Eilers. <laughs> Go Bobcats. Well, you know, Carolina Panthers, so, you know. You know, I should have uh, actually just today, Ohio University, I think we've gone through this, this folder here. Um, Ohio University just sent out a tweet like saying, you know, we're going to start the hashtag why I love Ohio. And I actually saw that. I was like, they posted it. And a minute later, I posted an old photo from Because people Bizcom. like us for coming yeah, from there. Exactly. That's why. I should have told them that they need to be uh, sending this out to the, the university for the live stream and everything. Definitely. So um, let's let's get into, uh, we're going to go into a lot more of your, your beauty and your commercial work. But let's let's talk about your love affair with uh, horses. Okay. Um, tell me Tell me about it. It's been long standing. I was a horse crazy kid, started riding when I was about seven. Never had enough money to have a horse of my own, but um, clean stalls in um, exchange for lessons. Oh, wow. Um, 
got a when I went to college, I dropped it, and then when one year I rented a room in a house out in the Hamptons, and the woman was had horses, so I bought my own horse off the racetrack. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! Um, and moved out to New Jersey, and it just, you know, it reinvigorated a country bug that I have inside me, and I'm much happier in nature than I am um, in an urban atmosphere. Oh yeah! And I love animals absolutely madly. You know, I always say that the more um, the more I get to know my dog, the less I like people. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the horses are great. You know, they're they're very, very, very beautiful. So this is the shot. That this we're is gonna, this we is can Zoe, my Eis- horse. Yeah. And this is what what you were working with Eisler on. Yes. Okay. So remember, everybody, remember this shot. So when we go back, I'm going to show a photo. It's a series that one. A series of this one. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Oh, this is so. This, this is. I, yeah. I didn't even know this is real. This kind of thing. I always it's thought real. this was just like in movies, but they, they actually do this, huh? That's five minutes down the street from my house in North Carolina. Really? Yep. And is this this is a hunt? Um, it's this is a huntsman. His name is Todd Goodwin. He's the only black huntsman in the U.S. Oh, okay. Um, and they he's the the huntsman of the Green Creek Hounds in North Carolina. Uh huh. And he's got sixty dogs or hounds. That's gracious. And um, it's amazing the way he Look at he this one's taking them. a leak on They're, the other one right there. They do a lot more than just take leaks. I'm telling you, they are <laughs> nasty dogs. <laughs> That's hilarious. I got peed on when I was shooting them. Yeah. And so, what's your? Uh, I noticed now we've. It looks like we're in a different. Form format. Yep. So um, I've seen some behind the scene photos of you, which we'll see soon. Um, what is your typical apparatus for shooting? Do you, do you shoot different cameras for different occasions and what, where and why? I do shoot differently. These black and whites are shot on an old Roloflex from the 40s. Oh, wow. I shoot Tri-X film, um, process it, scan it, and then uh, work on them digitally in the computer. Mm-hmm. And um, print them beautifully on some textured Epson paper. Um, the color, I'm gravitating towards color, those those large format portrait landscape things, such as the Huntsman one. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I've been shooting the black and white for quite a while, and I'm always looking for a change. Um, but I do many, many, I do a lot of formats. That, that was on a Sony, this was on my Leaf camera. Yeah. Um, this I- was... Sorry, go ahead. No, uh, this was a, a shoot that we did. I worked for a sheikh out of Abu Dhabi for a year. Um, really? Documenting his Arabian racehorses. Really? And um, this was in Delaware and we set up a portable studio and shot some portraits of the horses. I have a horse story, portrait horse story. Oh, I'm dying to hear it. I got called, uh, actually a friend of mine, Ryan Schick, used to work at Sports Illustrated for Kids, right. hired me when I was in college. Or no, that wasn't it. National Geographic for Kids hired me to take a picture of a horse in Ohio that plays basketball. Oh, That's sure. what they told me what the horse <laughs> right. did, okay? Really what the horse did is grabbed a ball that had like a, a mouthpiece, s- stepped two feet up onto a stool, and let it into a little kitty hoop or whatever, oh, which was still God. kind of cute. So, but I was in college. I'm still learning things. I It was done in a dark barn, something like this, yeah. and I was using strobes, and I was worried about it. Did you ever worry about strobes? Spooking horses? No, or do they they, not? they don't real. They see the flash, but they don't react to it. It's more the light stands that I worry about. <laughs> oh right, yeah. yeah. Um, um, so so what ended up happening is this horse did the thing. I got the shots and everything, and then the horse kind of freaked out later and kicked the owner, and the owner had to go to the hospital. It was like it was just like a freak thing. I oh thought God. I had screwed up this first shoot. I'm a college student, shoot National Geographic kids. I mean, it right, was, right, it, right, right. And um, but anyways, they ended up liking the photos and ran a spread for it. And well, the whole good. thing with Ryan Chick and Sports Illustrated, they ended up buying the photos yeah. for a Sports Illustrated kid situation. Huh. But anyways, that that shot reminded me of of the one that I did because it was just a dark barn. You yeah, know? I don't know yeah. if you had a background here. Or yeah, we anything. did. We had a big okay. black velvet background. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, that, that's a funny looking horse. That is an electric um, warm up that the racers, the horse, the jockeys use yeah. when they're warming up for a race. Yeah. It's, you know, you plug it in and it moves like a horse. And do you, do you prefer shooting film or digital these days more? I mean, I, obviously you shoot a lot of film. I see, notice the formats, but it's a digital world. It's a digital world. And uh, the preference, I can't really put my finger on it. Um, I must admit, I. As far as digital goes, I like the fact that I'm tethered and I can see. Right. But as far as intuitiveness with film, there's that sense of you know you got it even if you can't see it. Right. There's a spirituality, as corny as that sounds, to shooting film that just doesn't exist with digital because you're always chimping with digital. Interesting. You know? Yeah. 
Um, um, you definitely rely on your instincts much more when you're shooting film, and that's sometimes a very, very good thing. Do you remember the time that you, you finally decided to start switching more more to do, towards digital and, and that? For the horse stuff or Well, just in, in general, general. In general. Um, I just went along the technology wave with everybody else, you know. Um, it was probably pressure from clients, and I remember I was using um, a better light scan back, uh -huh. you know, which scans three passes, uh -huh. and uh, my studio was above a subway, so that was always a bit of an issue, but... Um, oh, really? Yeah, and my, and my boyfriend at the time said, you know, oh, how do you like digital? I said, oh, it's never going to stick. <laughs> <laughs> it's never going to stick, right, exactly. Okay, so we've gone through these. I'm going to quickly go to Eisler's photo here, I think it was at the end, where we had talked about that shoot so this is this is the the, the color colored horse where you did a, a series of horses where you, you I guess you photographed them with different color gels is that what it was no or? no we actually body painted her it was oh. my horse Zoe and we spray painted her with human body paint uh, with a big um, air gun that you spray paint a car with uh -huh. had it connected to an air compressor thanks to Mike and uh, sh shot her four times four seasons oh she, wow she was uh, silver in the winter green for spring, blue for summer, yellow for fall. And this was a personal project then? It was a personal project. Okay. Yeah. And so you wheeled out, I mean, I don't know, this could be just in your backyard for all I know. Uh, it's not my backyard, no. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, you actually shot this tethered for we a personal did. project. We you did, know, that's, yeah. That seems yeah. like a, a quite an ordeal for a personal thing. This was the most um, labor-intensive personal project I've ever done in my whole life. It took really? four years to do it. Oh my gosh. And uh, from soup to nuts. And um, it, so many nerves. I mean, I must have, I kind of OD'd on adrenaline and uh, a lot of people involved, a lot of danger involved because, mm -hmm. you know, shooting a horse in the woods that's painted. But it was really, it was worth it. It was a lot of fun. I'm going to go through Mike's photos right now just to, as, since we were talking about the behind the scenes stuff, maybe yeah. you can kind of walk us through what we're looking at in these situations here. This was a pressure. Mike and um, his friend Dustin Betterly are two guys that I've used as techs, and I've they are him, yeah. absolute geniuses. I can't tell you how much they've added to my life and my photography. Um, and it's are, really important to be work with people that, that just know their their shit. Absolutely. And those guys really do. They know their stuff. I, I mean, I, I, I've walked in, uh, in, even just recently, I had a shoot with Mike, and, and all the times that I get a real big shoot, and I want to just not worry about, you know, anything. almost anything. It's almost like you just say, this is what we're going to do, right. and you walk in, they've got it done, they right. hand you the camera, you're right. ready to go, and you just work on the subject. And, right. and you know that if there is a technical problem during, it's going to get solved. There's right. just no doubt about it. Okay, so we've got Two strobes, two two pro photo strobes. We're, what are we shooting through here? Uh, this was a job for Twisted T. I had to shoot um, a very very high pressure splash behind a twisted a whole series of Twisted T bottles and cans. I think that these aren't in line properly. Are these all in line properly now? Twisted T is down here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. So we'll go to here. So Mike and Dustin, we let them loose with a solder. Iron, soldering iron, and a bunch of pipes and tubes and nuts and and uh, Dustin used to work with HVAC. He grew up as an HVAC tech. Yeah. So when it comes to tubing, he's like the king. So this is actually looks like a shot of a screen that that Mike probably took with his cell phone or it, something. Well, yeah, like that, yeah, that's so just this a test shot. This isn't the uh, the final shot. Yeah. But, but they they built a pressurized water tank for me, and um, it was absolutely incredible because at one point the client said, oh, you know, the water is overlapping the E on Twisted T, and we can't have that. So Dustin and Mike turned down the pressure just a teeny little bit, and sure enough, the water didn't hit the E anymore. I mean, oh that's, that's how it's they like, are. They it's just incredible. They know exactly how to fix whatever yeah, you need. Yeah, yeah, That's awesome. But we love that stuff. Um, okay, so again, we're a little bit out of order, but uh, we're going to do these. That's story of my life. These. Um, all right, so this is, oh, here's, so this is there one you of your... Who's this? This is that uh, is your David Field, the onset retoucher. All right, so you can kind of see in the background here what what you were what, doing, right, 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 which is really cool. Yeah, and you guys were basically putting in a, a different background to it. Yep, and uh, very neat, very neat. Southern Comfort. All right, this was an amazing job. Um, we, video. It was shooting video, um, Phantom. Uh, you know, high speed camera, 2,500 frames a second, I think we might have been doing. Mm -hmm. um, but we had the camera on the end of a robotic arm, mm -hmm. and you could program, because we were doing flybys. Oh, okay. Um, you know, where we had these beautiful um, synchronized moves, and uh -huh. it needed to be the same every single time. So we had the camera on the end of this robotic arm, and it was um, really, really, really fun. Oh, that's wild. And here's another, the Twisted T, where you yep. just 
these are little fake ice crystals, right? right? That's a food stylist placing the um, crushed ice. And people don't realize all the things you don't have to, it's not just taking the stuff and putting it down and taking pictures. You need to have retouch, on-set retouchers. You need to have a couple of techs and assistants. You've got yourself, you've probably got $100,000 worth of gear yep. or more. Yep. Um, you need a studio space. Um, and, all and encased, all in, encased in plastic drop cloths. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. And this was a, a job you did for, was it Target? Um, this was actually, my agent at the time was taking um, the whole her whole team's portfolios to Target for a meeting. Oh, yeah? And she gave us the assignment of um, doing a shot specifically for Target. Oh, cool. And so I decided to make, since I'm you know, um, a splash queen, I decided to uh, make a Target splash. A Target splash, nice. Hopefully, it's uh, in the in the portfolio shot. Yeah, well, I'm not absolutely. Sure yeah, it is. Okay. So again, sorry to everyone. We don't have these organized properly, but it gives you an idea. And here's another shot of the uh, twisted T. Yep. Uh, from a different angle, and so you're using a hot light here as well. It looks like that might have just been a focus light because we oh, certainly focus light. wouldn't. Uh, yeah, it's got to be just a focus light. We're gotcha. Using you, were, light you, you were using stills. Okay, doing stills. What we got going on um, here? That was part of that same job with the robotic arm. Oh, okay. It was just an overhead pour of um, tequila. Right. But it was done in slow mo, so that it was. You know, we shot that with the Phantom. We shot video on that. Right. And that's the um, mechanism that the food stylist concocted to so keep. So you can the, keep it. So going. you can keep it going. You don't have to refill it and right. reposition it. Right. Oh, see, see, these are all these things you don't think about because yeah. I'm. Uh, and, and again, we'll we'll put on the videos, but you see the the. The liquid going through the bottles, and I'm right. like, how many times do you have to go right, through right, all right. that? Right, right, right. No, you just uh, you you make things easier for yourself. Yeah. So this is behind the scenes of the little shoot that's going on in that little that little. Uh, oh yeah, that's seamless. That's the robot one. This um, here, he's programming the moves into the robot. And you would, I mean, you wouldn't know how to use those. You have to get people, special people, in to to work this stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing with video that you can know a little bit about stuff. It's good to know a little bit so that you know what to ask people to do. Mm -hmm. But the software is so incredibly uh, deep, you know, that you really do need to know, have a pro do it. Right. Okay, let me uh, find this folder real quick. Of course, we're having those flickering issues here. Um, where did I put this? Sorry, guys. Um, you had a bunch of videos in here. Here we are. Japanese fishery. Oh, that's a good one. Let's do that one. We have to turn down the music. Oh, that's I a shame. Found, I know it's a shame, but we had. I found that... Um, and we'll just chat in the background while this plays in the background. Okay. But I, I found that uh, having music on anything during YouTube videos messes, ends up messing up my... Um, Your copyright stuff? Copyright stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it ends up being that, like, you know, you can't... This won't show in Germany, and then right, there'll be all right, these right, kind of issues. Right, right, or right, it'll right. just completely knock off our conversation during it. So, right. Um, so, th I mean, this is in really in incredible stuff. And, and when did it turn from stills to more video? Were you always into the world of film? No. I mean, I've always been a film lover, like all of us. You know, you use your eyeballs and you like movies. But um, the when f when film became accessible to phot for photographers, when they put video on the D um, DSLR, was when I started to move into video. Uh-huh. Um, same here, I had that same same yeah. sort of situation. Yeah, um, it's amazing what the what the cameras are, are able to do. Yeah, let's see here what we got. Oh, this here. is a nice one too. I have a great friend named Steve Romano who's a Phantom operator, uh -huh. and he and I do a lot of these things together. Where you know, because that's a very complicated camera to operate. Oh yeah, but we do a lot of the slow mo stuff together. Oh, that's cool. And w was this a a, a project you just worked on with him or was it a client? Um, it was a client, sort of a semi-client thing. Um, I was doing a job for wine enthusiast, shooting uh -huh. all these beautiful Rydell decanters. Uh -huh. And um, so we kept them for a couple of days and made this. And then Rydell bought the piece um, or is thinking about buying the piece to put on their site. Yeah. So. Very cool. I remember seeing a lot of this in your, your video that um, Richard the did Richard for did, you. The Richard did, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to post that. So, so tell me a little bit about how you get, I mean, we mentioned... Um, you cold call sometimes, right? How do you how do you build your client base? How do you keep that client base and still keep fresh and have time to do these personal projects of your own? I mean, it just seems like everything that I do personally, it's like I go out and shoot something and I and I'm done usually. I don't have this whole studio setup situation and, mm -hmm, and I mean mm -hmm. like, how do you have the time to do all this and how do you keep a uh, a solid? It's so funny you say that because every time I look at you know, other successful photographers' websites, and I think, oh, my God, how do they have the time to do all this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you just, um, 
you, I don't do everything on my own. You know, I have a retoucher, I have a video editor. Mm -hmm. um, you, the, things lie fallow when you're paying attention to something else. You know, if I'm doing a horse project, my still life tends to kind of suffer for a few weeks. Uh -huh. um, I just rotate. I rotate my time. You know, I pay attention to the horse stuff for a while. I pay attention to the still life for a while, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Very cool. But I like, you know, I do take the things to completion, but other things suffer when I'm when I'm not doing something else. Yeah. Are you um, and are you working on any particular projects at the moment for anything anything exciting? Yeah, I did um, my town in North Carolina. It's called Tryon, and they had a TEDx event there. Oh, cool! Oh, yeah, I saw something. So yeah. you did a, a video. I did a little commercial for commercial them. Yeah. For them. Yeah, and that was actually fantastic because it was the first uh, video piece that I did soup to nuts on my own. Right. And it was a volunteer project. I wasn't paid for it, so I had a lot of time. Uh -huh. So I learned um, Premiere Pro. A little bit, um, you know. So I learned a lot of the technology, the software, um, in order to produce the the video. It was great. That's cool. I get, it was kind of like a project I gave myself to learn. Um, it's, it's funny seeing myself. Seeing yourself <laughs> talk, like, yeah. That's I mean, not just me don't now. pay attention. I'm not to wearing it. the same so this shirt. Is, that, that, this powder thing, um, which we used for our cover photo for the event. Uh huh. Um, that's, I mean, you do a lot of, you get messy. We get really, really dirty. And is this studio somewhere, something that you rented out, or do you have your own studio? Um, the studio, the messy studio is, uh, it's JFX, or I think it's called JFX. It's in Gowanus in Brooklyn. Uh -huh. And you can throw anything there. That place is, a, is really, I mean, you can get really messy. That's the whole, you can blow things up and everything. Right. Um, the studio that you see in the background in that wine one was my studio on 26th Street. Oh, okay. Um, and how long have you had a studio on 26th Street? I just stopped having it in July of last year, but I had it for 12 years. I would imagine it's a huge expense. It, uh, that's exactly why I got rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. It I mean, might, it I wasn't mean, expensive when I started, but it became expensive. Right, right. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about promotion, uh, about how you... Yeah, you asked me about um, exactly. the clients, how the you, cold how calling. How do you keep on, keep on clients and, and stuff? I mean, I know that I use social in many ways personally for personal stuff on facebook but i also yeah. you know publicly on instagram and twitter and facebook as well yeah professional pages you have your professional page on on facebook as well yeah um have you when did you get into that did you did you adopt it right away and realize oh i got to get on this or or and how yes, do you feel I it's mean, helped you i ha i haven't been resistant to i'm not ever resistant to technological change you can't be. I mean, I think right. if you're resistant to it, forget it. You might Except as well you just... thought digital wasn't going to make it. Well, <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> Once I realized that mistake, I got on the bandwagon. Right. Um, but yes, you know, I, I post on Instagram and Facebook and uh, you know, Twitter just like everybody. But I think that doesn't, for most people, that doesn't get you jobs. It gets you notoriety. Like a, it, it'll have people notice you. Right. Um, Cold calls still work. It's harder to get people to answer the phone ever than ever, you know, before. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, keeping clients is all about doing the job correctly. Yeah. You know, um, thinking of the client first and foremost, making sure that everything goes well, working really hard. Uh, keeping the clients the hard part, you know. So, so more than just technically nailing the assignment but actually making sure that the client is happy, going through, you know, not having any issues. A lot of the shoots that I imagine you do, oh, there's your, your horse. There's the green horse, yeah. That's pretty. That's the silver one. <laughs> I actually thought, wow, it was snowing. Um, but but not very many shoots of mine, except for the, the larger commercial types, do you actually have the client on set with you. Right. I would imagine that most all your work. It, most of them, yeah. You got a client on yep. set. So it's not, it's like you have someone literally looking over your shoulder and looking yeah. at the picture as it's coming out of the camera and yeah. critiquing you. I mean, you, you can dictate the rules. I mean, one of my rules is you can't hang over my shoulder. You okay. know, you've, you, um, this is, you know, you, you build people a nice space to sit. Everybody works on their computer all the time, mm -hmm. you know. So you say, this is your space. When I'm ready to bring you over, then you are welcome to come over. Or you, you know, you can sit back there and watch what we're doing, but you can't say anything or make any judgments until we're ready. Yeah. You know, because there is nothing worse than having someone hang over your shoulder. Oh, yeah. Uh, but you absolutely can make rules. Yeah. Um, just, you know, get, be nice about it, but everybody has their own working methods, so you tell them yours and politely. Right. And you do your thing. Right. Is it, uh, normally do you have a uh, art director on site with you? It, it depends on the scale of the job. It's an art director, a creative director. Sometimes the client shows up, the account exec will show up. I mean, you know, sometimes these shoots are huge with people you can't even figure out what they do. So, so let's 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 go through a 
a theoretical assignment. I'm Jack Daniels, or I'm someone, I'm calling you up. Um, is it a bidding process that you go through first, or do they usually call you and say, we got a job for you, this is what we want to do, give me a bid? 50-50. Uh, um, it's often a bidding, you know, three-way bids are definitely the, um, the way of the world today. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes someone will call me who knows me and knows that they want me to do it, so let's say I have a job, and then you just have it. Yeah. You know, so um, those are the, the, uh, that's great when that happens. Right, right. Interesting. I mean, it's just a, a lot. And then, and then the, and then, so, so do you, do you get a lot of work? Is most of your work based out of like New York, the fact that you're a New Yorker? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, so it's not like you have, you live in North Carolina because you get work, so much work there. It's more like that's home. There's not a whole lot of work in Western North Carolina. <laughs> yeah. Four Bent Corners, that was done by Richard Patterson, yeah. by the way. Yeah. So you can check him out. He also came with us to, to Maui. Um, to the Maui Photo Workshop. I mean, um, I have the North Carolina end of my, uh, I, mean, I, have, I have a studio down there in which I can work, you know, and I'll do editorial jobs when, if, I, if there's no client around, I'll do them there. Right. Um, but I move there for the environment and the pace and the access to the horse stuff and, you know, the fact that I can push my artwork, but I didn't move there because it's, um, there's tons of work down there. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Cool. So um, let's, let's, uh, Let's let's talk more business. I mean, okay. I mean, I think that that's really important for for folks to know. Okay, so what are we going through now? By the way, before I, I just opened up a, a folder. Oh, this here. Is probably is the, maybe art and other art and other folder. <laughs> <laughs> you do so much. I should have played that video first. That's what yeah. I should have done. I would have given everybody like a, an idea of what you do. I so know. silly of me. I'm One a bit all days. over the place when it comes to work. Um, so uh, business, business, business. Um, well, you know, we're getting towards tax time. Yep. Oh, yay. Isn't that exciting? I love to. Well, I have a bookkeeper, so I really don't care. <laughs> okay, okay. So let's talk about the bookkeeper. I mean, do you do you have a bookkeeper all year? I do. do. You just give them, I do. You just literally send them all the expenses all the time? Um, she's a she's a, a, a woman who wears many hats. She's a bookkeeper. She's a studio manager. She's a casting person. She's a producer. Ah. Um, she sort of does a lot of stuff. She's For a know, lot of people or just you? No, just me. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, is she, I mean, is she like, she's one of your almost employees or something? Um, like, she's a part-time employee, part -time. Yeah, employee. but then yeah, I say part very loosely. <laughs> <laughs> she's not really part time, <laughs> but she's part time. Um, gotcha. Um, okay, what else? What else can we talk about business wise? Uh, what what are, what do you find is the biggest struggle in maintaining what you do? I think um, it's funny. Getting work has become more difficult. Um, it seems as if um, in the old days, people would answer the phone and you could make that personal contact right away. Mm -hmm. I think it is personal contacts and personal relationships that build and keep the clients that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but it's much more difficult to make those relationships than it ever used to be because, uh, you know, I mean, people used to answer emails, people don't even answer emails anymore. Oh, you know, yeah. So you have to kind of figure out creative ways. There are a lot of meetups. I think meetups are great to meet clients. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, portfolio reviews. Um, do, th you know, if you're a cyclist, cycle with your clients. You know, I mean, I know it sounds so corny, but people well, like, to, people they, like they, to do stuff outside of work. And people like to work with people they enjoy personally. Exactly. I mean, you're not necessarily always going to get calls back from people if they didn't enjoy you right. as a person. Right. If they have nothing in common with you, they're probably not going to hire you back. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, so here we go. So specialization. We, we, we had talked, you know, we, I could say you specialize in, in everything. In everything. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. It, it, at one point, it was that you, a photographer needed to have one specialization area to really thrive and right. set themselves apart. Right. I, I grew up as a photojournalist, started as a photojournalist. Um, I was mainly into sports photography. Well, I don't do sports photography anymore. It's really rare that I do sports photography. Mm. Um, even though I can do it, I lo it's fun, um, but I really loved documentary travel. But I also, I don't mind shooting a bar mitzvah wedding, um, you know, to make the money to do the travel work that I, that I do. Let's talk about that. I mean, you, spe you started specializing in one place at the beginning, or, di or did you? Yeah, I mean, I specialized when I first started out, I was much more of an editorial still life photographer doing mm -hmm. sort of illustrative type of still life. Mm -hmm. And it was as that work progressed that I realized that the technical and the artistic side was really good for me. Yeah. Um, the water shooting splashes and liquor and powder and high speed is really great for me because it's 
technically very, very difficult, and I love that. Yeah. Um, but specialization, I think, in many respects, is kind of dead, you know, um, especially now that I do work not just in New York. I mean, by moving out of New York, you kind of open the doors to do work everywhere. Mm -hmm. When you're in New York, sometimes as a still life photographer, you end up working just in New York. Mm -hmm. um, when you work out of New York, you can't really specialize just because it's not the, you know, the client environment is much more broad outside New York. Mm -hmm. um, and plus, I think, you know, for the, for the economy, for, the e for economic reasons, you do everything. I mean, I've shot real estate videos now. I would never have thought I was doing real yeah. estate video yeah. or real estate, you know, 10 years ago. So, so did you, have you, you have found clients that you never expected to have, and was that based off of just some, some maybe serendipity, some maybe just like, oh, this sort of fell in my lap, and oh, it, it actually makes pretty good money, and it can, you know, sort of... I think it's a question of always keeping your eyes open, you know, I'm kind of an inveterate business person, and even when I go to a party, as calculated as it sounds, I'm always thinking, oh, well, this person's really nice, and I love talking to them, but I wonder if they have some work for me, you know, that or, kind of or, thing. Right, but that, I always also feel that way, too. You know, you never know who you might you run never into. Know. Who's, I always, well, except for today, I didn't have a card on the subway. I was talking to someone. But, you know, you never know where a job's going to come from. I, right. I once got a job from the subway. I, I, was, I was going, this is back when I shot sports for the Times. Uh, as a freelancer and I had my big 300 lens and uh, my credential and some guy and a kid were sitting there and said, oh, you're going to the game. Oh, really cool. We're going to. And I asked them where they were sitting. They were courtside. So immediately, you know that they're obviously ballers or something. Yeah. And I said, OK, at halftime, I'll see if you all can find you. I'll take a picture. And I did. I found him, took a snap of them and emailed it to him just as a, you know, hey, here you go. Turns out he's a lawyer and wrote me back and wants to wanted me to take headshots for his firm. And it ended up being, you know, many thousands of dollars. That's fantastic. Just, just from just, a, right, a freak right, sort of right. run in. You just have to be open to everything. Yeah. And we were yeah. talking beforehand about, uh, you know, one of my clients is School of Medicine. Yeah. And it was from a card that I passed out when I was on a yeah. A times assignment seven years ago. Yeah. Just uh, you never know when that kind of yeah. stuff is. So, so, I mean, do you find that it compounds off of things Absolutely, like that? Absolutely. You know, and I think, I mean, one of the uh, part of my reputation, I think, I like to, I like to think is that I, I kind of solve clients' problems. I'm, you know, because every single job can, it has the potential to be fraught with problems. Mm -hmm. And these jobs are really important to clients, you know, to an art director or a creative director these jobs mean a lot to them and they go through a lot to choose you or me to shoot the job mm -hmm. and if we make them look good if we solve all their problems and they walk out of the door feeling confident yeah they're going to come back yeah. i mean that's that's what you have to have in mind i believe is that it's not you know I, and that's the way i approach it. it yes i love taking pictures and i love taking videos but more than anything else i love solving people's problems mm -hmm. and i love making their life a little easier mm -hmm. as corny as that sounds you know if you were to uh, first of all oh there's the, the there's the target, target picture yeah. yeah that's so cool really really cool um so uh if you were talking to a young let's say photographer that's going and wants to get wants to be you <laughs> <laughs> you know i mean it's well look i mean i i can imagine i remember when i was in college looking at photojournalists working for the times and whatever and think i want to be that person i yep. want my life to be yeah, just absolutely. like that absolutely be able to have a studio and travel to where i want to do have my passion with yep. horses and yep. still do this on the side and yep. work with video and film getting into people getting into it now would you have any advice for them would you would was there would there be anything like that you've learned that you feel like, you know, if, I don't know, it's, a, it's kind of a hard one, huh? I mean, it's a broad question, but I feel like you, I mean, d having having a passion for it and shoot shooting things, you know, everybody, I think everybody says this, but taking pictures of something that you love to take pictures of is, for me, what's been crucial. You know, I have gravitated towards being good at things that I enjoy taking pictures of. Right. I love the technical aspect of shooting splashes. I love horses. Right. You know, um, I love design. I love, uh, you know, it's, I'm not a good fashion photographer because that's not really my world, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be very good at something, you have to be passionate about what you're shooting. Right. You know? That's absolutely, absolutely true. Passion. Yep. And, um, 
what about openness to like like do, doing things that you wouldn't expect to do, like the real estate stuff? It may not be the most exciting stuff in the world, but uh, to tell you the truth, the real estate stuff has been really exciting. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because oh, I've um, I'm really open always to learning new techniques, and through the real estate stuff, I mean, Richard um, Patterson turned me on to shooting with a drone. Oh, right. And that's been amazing. Yeah, he got his drone. You know. <laughs> It was funny. Our last hour in Hawaii, he crashed his drone, and oh like we God. had to like have a little boy climb on a surfboard into the shrubs <laughs> to try to get it out of the situation. It was yeah, pretty yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, Crashing is part of what happens. It's like well, he's got to learn you, somehow, right? You know, it's going to happen. I just said, please don't land it on somebody's head. That's <laughs> exactly, all I worry about. Exactly. You know, we're here at the Four Seasons. Just don't <laughs> land it on someone's head. Um, but everything, but everything I approach has new technology surrounding it. So. For that reason, I find it fascinating. I'm always learning new stuff. Right. You know? Um, let's uh, talk a little bit about, uh, in general, n networking. Okay. Um, how m you, you met, we talked a little bit about going to different meetups and parties and, and you know, doing that thing. How important is it to you? How often do you go to photographic networking type type situations? Do you, do you go to, have you ever done, I know we we're, we're going to talk about workshops because, I mean, we had talked about maybe doing yeah, one yeah, at some yeah. point, which is really cool. But yeah. have you gone to workshops or attended any, like, expos or and how, um, how important I is that? I teach at the Palm Beach Photographic Center in January every uh -huh. year. Um, I teach a, horse shop, a workshop on horse photography. Uh -huh. um, but I go there mainly because it's a congregation of really fantastically talented people. Uh -huh. And... Um, so I do that. I take. I go to Photo Expo and I take some classes and seminars at Photo Expo. Right. I took some on video this year. You take. You take the class. I take the class. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So you, so it's, you're always learning something new. It's always. Like you're, you're always. And it's important, like you said, stay on top of the technology. So I'm realizing we didn't go through this beauty beauty. Uh, I love so, beauty. So okay. So people. You people. actually photograph not just horses, not just objects, but you actually photograph people. I and do. You, and you do it pretty well. Um, how, how much of your work is this sort of beauty type stuff? Um, 20%. Yeah? Yeah. Huh. And I approach it in a still life way. Yeah. Um, it's studied, it's thought out, it's meticulous. The lighting, it, you know, we test the lighting, the position is studied. So it's still life with a human being in it. Right. I feel. Right. Um, and then there's always the serendipity of, a, of the person. I mean, I can't, I can direct her to some extent, but I she's a human so i can't you know surprises happen and often those are the best absolutely so absolutely but that's a still life i mean i'm sorry that's, that's a still life that's Im amazing yeah what kind of uh, you were using we're using like a macro lens for this um it's a leaf back with a macro with a 120 macro yeah wow that's pretty intense there should have used that for the the cover shot beautiful 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 thank you um man and and so this is the, like this. It's just like I said. It's like a, a totally different world of photography that, that you is. do compared to what I do. And it's hard yeah. for me to sort of like even imagine what goes into it. A lot of also I should say that I grew up as a photojournalist. Right. So a lot of what I do, it has, everything has to be done in camera. But I'm sure that you do too. You do all this lighting tests and everything to get things almost perfect. Yeah. But yeah. there's also to an extent some post production oh, in yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah, in yeah, a lot yeah. of the work that you do yeah. as well. Um, are you personally skilled at Post-production? Uh, no. I mean, I'm not unskilled. Um, <laughs> some jobs I can do it if they're simple. Uh -huh. But, you know, one person can't know everything. And there are retouchers out there who are absolute geniuses. Exactly. So we exactly. hire the geniuses. For the genius jobs, we hire the geniuses. Exactly. Keep, keep, the, keep the experts with doing yeah. what they do the best. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I had to do all the retouching, I'd talk about no time. I'd never have any time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, so... New York. How long are you in New York before you head back to North Carolina? I'm um, towards the end of the week. I'm going back. Yeah. And uh, anything, anything big happening? To, um, actually, there's a little film festival in Camden, South Carolina. Oh yeah. Over the weekend, and I have um, one of my little films is in the film festival. Oh, so cool! One of the ones that we showed, or something different. It it's called Tribute. It might. I don't. I'm not so sure. I, I, I might have brought it. you commercial stuff. I, it's right, a horse yeah. one. No, it's okay. Oh, it's a horse it's one. A horse okay. One. So is it like a documentary you did? Um, it's a little inter. It's an interview. Is this what you did with Richard? This is what I did with Richard. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. It's an interview with a dressage rider about her reactions to dressage and her feelings about it, and it's a tearjerker. <laughs> oh, you know, I think you p might have posted this on uh, social. Have you posted it's, this? It's been on Facebook. Okay, yeah, yeah, I think I have seen this. Yeah. All right, that's really yeah. cool. So, if people want to go and see 
like this this uh, video that you're talking about, where would they see it? It's on my website. On too. your website, Monica yeah. Stevenson Photography. Mo- Monica Stevenson dot com. Monica Stevenson dot com. Okay. Yep. I think you've also got photography. I That's have like your Monica photo Stevenson Photography. Like that. That's my um, horsework. Oh, your horsework is on there. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Um, do, are you inspired by any particular photographers? Do you like? Do you look at different lighting and say, oh, you know, I really love how this photographer did this, or do you literally just go and just play around and conceptualize before the shoots? I'm inspired more by painters than I am by photographers. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, do you have an art background at all? I st- have a BFA. I mean, I have a you right. know, I studied art and I did those art history slides just like everybody else <laughs> yeah. did. Um, but I love Dutch still life painters. I love Dutch portrait painters. Uh, I go to anytime I travel anywhere, I go to a museum, I, which isn't to say I don't go see photo exhibits. I do. Uh-huh. Um, but there's no, especially those horse things. Those were inspired by pain, by paintings. The horses were really. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. I remember this f- focus one. All right. So we got through those. Um, you know, low battery. Uh Oh, got five, five percent left here. Um, well, I mean, I think that we've we've gone through a lot. Is there anything that that uh, we were going to talk about that you can think that we've missed that you want to want to um, discuss maybe a little? I mean, maybe the still to motion thing a little bit. Oh yeah, let's talk about that still to motion thing. I'm, uh, should I bring something up? Uh, you can bring a video up if you want. All right, we'll makes go, sense. Why don't we go ahead and uh, bring up? Is one your of the, computer going to die? Oh, thank you, Chewy. Chewy to the rescue with power. Thank you, Chewy. Whenever, whenever anyone's in Adorama, please be sure to um, say hello to Chewy because he's great. He's the big burly guy in the event space. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so we were going to go find some. You know, you know what else we could talk about What's briefly that? too is um, the whole printing thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, you'd mentioned you know, that. Um, because when I went down to Palm Beach recently, I taught at that workshop um, and... Uh, I had a show down there at the same time, which is part of the reason why I went down. Uh-huh. And I spent four days printing my work for the show. Uh-huh. And I rekindled my love affair with prints, uh-huh. which I think, unfortunately, in this digital age, we've kind of forgotten about. Mm-hmm. And so that's something that I've, I'm ex- enjoying you know, a hundredfold mm-hmm. is the actually, you know, seeing something in printed form as opposed to seeing it on the computer because mm-hmm. there's nothing like it. Oh, look at this. You've got the, some behind the scenes stuff here from one of your powder oh, that's shoots. A, oh yeah. That's, that's a really good there little video. There we go. Okay. So we'll put this in the background. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so stills to video. Yep. Um, very difficult. Very difficult. Yep. Do you have, I, we're at this point. I remember when we first, when reds first came out, people were talking, Oh, you know, still photography is going to be over because you're just going to be able to pull these high resolution photos from it's different there's it's like very different it really is yeah yeah i mean you can tech physically if and you have to. you can do it yeah um but all the ministrations that go into taking a photograph can't go into that one twenty fourth of a second frame mm-hmm. you know um if you have to you can do it but uh it's uh, you know that, that 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 answers your question right I mean, you know um I mean, I think with people, it's probably easier because people are moving around and maybe you caught something, you know. Well, let's talk about this. So you, you have, you, how Im- it is important, as you see, to not, there's Mike, um, to not only be, sh- you're shooting a still sh- uh, shoot right now. This is still photos. We did, we did this um, still one day video the next. Oh, okay. So you had yep. to do two separate days for both things. Yep. And, yep. and on your typical shoots, I noticed lately you've been doing a lot of behind the scenes. Yep. Is that something that you've decided, like, it adds value to what you do to have behind the scenes, not only for your PR, but also for the client. Like, oh, wow, this is great. And but, you, you know, and what I've really, people love seeing how you do things. I yeah. mean, some of the stuff we do is really complex, and people are so psyched when they can see how you did it. Right, right. You know, and um, it's exciting to see all these people laughing, and, you know, you get to see that, you know, the photo wasn't so pretty. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's fun. Um all right. Well, um, Monica, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't know that I have, uh, anything in my, in my brain to ask you is it, what, what, do you have anything else to, to, to tell, tell the audience? Um, I don't really know. I mean, I think we've covered an awful lot. Yeah, We sure have. We have covered an intense amount. 
Well, um, I think that this is a, uh, with, with this awesome video, maybe it's a uh, good time to, to say our goodbyes. Um, everybody, I just want to thank you all for, for coming here in the, the studio audience, but also to uh, Monica for, for your time. Of I, course. I, luckily, you have a, you, you are here in New York sometimes, so it's not like you flew out from uh, Carolina for no, this. No, no, I mean, if I didn't, I, by no means am I not in New York. It's like, you know... I have a place here to stay and live, and um, I'm a New Yorker. I'll well, always be a New Yorker. Well, I hope that we can uh, spend some more time, uh, get acquainted. Maybe Thank we get you. the uh, you know, Patterson and Eisler and the and that, the Betterly and the crew that'd be out really great. for drinks or something. That'd be really great. Sounds good. All right, everybody, please, if you like this, uh, if you like really great photography content, please subscribe to our YouTube page. Thanks again to Adorama Canon Professional Services. <laughs> and uh, Temba bags for your support. Uh, and we'll see you again next time. Thank you so much, Monica. Thank you. All right. It's been a pleasure. Take care, everyone.